the next three speakers will be uh, introduced by Dr. Lazarus. Thank you. Uh, the next speaker is uh, Dr. Steve Kornblau. He's a professor of medicine at the MD Anderson uh, Cancer Center and is going to be speaking advances in relapsed and refractory AML. Thank you very much for inviting me. Um, so the slides that you're going to receive uh, in your book have a lot of detail, not all of which I will be able to cover in the 15 minutes that are allotted. Uh, I'll be going pretty quickly here. So the topic is, is there anything new for relapsed AML? The status quo, as you just heard, is that most patients achieve remission, but most patients relapse. Currently, the status is that uh, you can only achieve cure uh, in a high percentage with stem cell transplant, uh, with the exception maybe of APL. Conventional chemotherapy has not advanced very much in the last uh, decade or two, and the strategy remains to try to get patients to transplant either directly or using chemotherapy to temporize. If they don't have a donor, palliative therapy versus chemotherapy or symptomatic care is appropriate. Allogeneic transplant in patients who get a subsequent CR is, occurs in about a third, and maybe a quarter of patients uh, who don't respond can still be salvaged with transplant. You would ideally like to perform a transplant as soon as possible, but most patients can't wait, and you will need to treat them with something first. Um, the problem with doing this is that most won't achieve a second CR, and toxicity or infections that develop while they're getting that therapy can preclude transplant. It would be helpful, of course, to know whether your patients are going to go into a second remission or not. Um, this is some stuff that Eli Esty and I came up with uh, a long time ago, and the thing that is most prognostic for remission, second remission attainment is first remission duration. This is clear across the board, study after study after study. Breaks at two years, one to two years, less than a year. Some groups use less than six months. In a simplified version of the thing at the bottom, we showed that if you had not had any prior salvage attempts, you had a 14, 47 or 72% chance of getting remission. But once you had failed one salvage, your chances dropped dramatically. Now, in the expanded thing on the bottom, we would suggest that you could use this sort of triaging to say that these patients who have a high chance should go to standard combination chemotherapy. These patients who have a lower chance of response are good candidates for phase two trials. And these patients are not going to respond to conventional therapy. You should send them directly to phase ones. There are models for predicting survival after relapse as well. On the right is the European prognostic index. On the left is the GOLAM, so a later adaptation. Both of these, again, use CR1 duration with somewhat different uh, cut points. Cytogenetics, GOLAMS uses FLT3-ITD, whereas the EPI uses age and prior uh, stem cell transplant. Again, you can sum up the score of the points, and this will give you an idea of what your chances are of a second CR and what your chances are of uh, survival at one year and uh, with EPI at five years. FLT3-ITD has been also been shown to be poor prognostic uh, marker at relapse as well as at diagnosis in a study by Dr. Rivandi. However, this was done before the advent of anti-FLT3 uh, ITD agents, so this might need some modification. Before we can assess if new therapies are better, we need to know what we achieve with co current combination therapies. Uh, one of the more common ones, if you're not going to you go back to Idarubus and Eris C, uh, is myosantron etoposide, often in combination with Eris C. In this study by Archambaud, they had uh, a good CR rate of 60%. Again, stratified depending on whether patients had first CR of more than six months or less than six months. But I'll point out that they had a high percentage of favorable prognosis patients in their group. Stem cell uh, transplant helped, but if they didn't use it, median survival was about seven months. There have been a large number of tr combination chemotherapy phase three comparison trials performed. Uh, and there's this slide and in the book another one from Stefan Fodderl. And you'll notice that the response rate is pretty steady in the 40s to 50s, and the median survival uh, is pretty steady at six months to a little bit more. Fludarabine ERC GCSF, or the FLAG regimen, is also commonly used in the salvage setting. This table shows five different uh, trials using it. And again, you have a CR rate generally in the 50 to 60 uh, percent range with median survival of about half a year to a little bit longer. 
This table from uh, Stefan Fodderl shows uh, a variety of different trials that have looked at FLAG or CLAG with cladarabine in combination with other agents. And again, there's a starkling homogeneity of response rates in the mid-50s uh, and one-year survival of uh, 15 to 20 percent typically seen. So that's standard for what you can get with combination therapy. Here's one trial from McLaughlin in a small group, uh, but they showed that they could rescue and get CRs in 40% uh, of patients who had failed mitosantrum and tripocyte with a fludarabine ARC based regimen. There are a variety of single agents that have been approved or that are commonly used in uh, relapse setting, and I'll go over these briefly. Uh, Decidabine has been a disappointment. There are three published trials. This table comes from Ganetsky, and you'll focus here on the complete remission rate, which is uh, unfortunately extremely low. Despite this, the median survival is not too much different from what you get with combination chemotherapy. I could not find any trials that used azacitidine uh, in this setting. However, azacitidine has been used um, as salvage therapy for patients who are relapsing after stem cell transplant. Uh, in one case from Hopkins, they had 37 patients who relapsed. 27 did not get uh, azacitidine, 10 did at a pretty standard dose. Six of those patients went on to get a CR. Um, four of them lost all chimerism for the host uh, and did very well, and their medium survival was uh, greater than a year and a third. In comparison, uh, those who did not get AZ azacitidine had a shorter survival um, and uh, did not live as long, but we don't know what criteria were that led those patients to not get azacitidine. Clofarabine has been looked at as a single agent or in combination in this case with intermediate dose ARC, in studies that started by Stefan Fodderl. And again, you get the same sort of response rate that we've seen with other combination chemotherapies. If you combine ARC plus or minus clofarabine in a large randomized trial, depending on whether you look at primary refractory or relapsed, the CR rate is almost double with the addition of clofarabine, and that was statistically significant, but the median survival was disappointingly similar between the two. If you add GCSF to that combination, maybe your CR rate goes up a little bit, and maybe your overall CR duration goes up a little bit. Clofarabine has been used as a single agent in the elderly and the infirmed in two studies out of England, the UWCM and the BioV. Uh, the criteria are up here for you to look at. And again, you have CR rates that are typical to perhaps a little bit lower, but again, remember this is an elderly and infirm population. If you got a CR, you lasted close to a year. All patients, though, the survival was only about five months. They concluded that this was better than low-dose ARC. I'm not sure how many of us would consider low-dose ARC to be the standard of care for this population. Lenalidomide has been evaluated, 31 patients, eight primary refractory, 23 relapse, eight of whom had relapsed after transplant. It's a bad group in terms of cytogenetics. They achieved an MTD, or figured out that the MTD was 50 milligrams. Um, they did get some CRs in this uh, population at the higher doses, but this was notably restricted to patients who had a lower Y count. Um, they did get responses, though, even in patients who had poor prognosis cytogenetics. So if you have combination chemotherapy and we have new agents, can we spice up an old recipe by adding something new? This study, they added imatinib to mitoxantron or toposide. There was three days of loading, and they continued for a couple days afterwards. Fairly large study, good number of patients at the MTD, pretty equal balance between short and long for CRs. 43% of the primary refractories responded, not stellar, but all seven of the relapse patients responded. Uh, we don't have CR durations on these patients, so we can't tell too much about this regimen. And notably, they found that inhibition of AKT uh, was higher in those who achieved CR, uh, but this was not true for ERK phosphorylation. I conducted a study previously where we added pravastatin to idorubes and ARC. This was based on data that AML blasts either eat a lot of cholesterol or synthesize a lot of cholesterol, and that this leads to chemoresistance. And if you block this with a statin, you can reverse this chemoresistance. Standard doses of pravastatin for high cholesterol are 20 to 80 milligrams a day. We got up to 1,680 milligrams a day, which led to a dose-limiting toxicity of too many pills. Uh, their bio-MTD was 1,280. We treated both newly diagnosed and salvaged patients, and I'll point out that our observed to expected ratio for both new 
and relapse patients was about twice what would be expected, especially in the unfavorable population. SWOG recently stopped a phase three trial because of positive results in November. So you should look for results from this coming up at either ASCO or ASH. Uh, Mylotarg was added to uh, decidamine in what was labeled a retrospective study among predominantly allo stem cell uh, transplant patients. They did get uh, roughly half of these patients into response, uh, mostly younger patients with intermediate cytogenetics. We don't know what their CR1 duration was. In another trial using gemtuzumab uh, and doctor's choice of what chemotherapy they wanted to give, if they gave the myelotarg before the chemotherapy, nobody responded. But when they gave it after the chemotherapy, 13 or 16 or 81 percent responded, uh, including uh, a whole lot of the primary refractory patients. Varinostat has been added to Irubs and ARC by Dr. Garcia Monero in newly diagnosed patients and it's getting a pretty good response rate uh, in this population. Since most of our relapse patients won't have seen varinostat, if you're going to consider idorubus and ARSC, it might be reasonable to add varinostat in. There are a variety of single agents that have been evaluated as well. Tacetostats and aminopeptidase, it cleaves the terminal, blocks the cleavage of the terminal amino acid, proteins back up, um, and you uh, initiate the unfolded protein response, which leads to apoptosis, synergizes with the cortezomib, um, again, a good number of patients in this phase one, two trial, and they did see some CRs, although they tended to be short-lived uh, in duration. But again, for a single agent, uh, potentially promising and maybe in combination will be good. mTOR inhibition has been tried with the idea that this would capture patients who have activated P3 kinase AKT pathway independently or through FLT3 ITD. Unfortunately, in several single agent trials, there's been at best modest activity. Vosoroxin, which used to be called voriloxin, which used to be called SNS595, is an interesting agent. It's a quinolone derivative, binds to DNA, poisons TOPO2. Uh, it is not a PGP substrate, and it does not have cardiac toxicity. It's been tried in a weekly and a twice-weekly schedule. Um, they did achieve some CRs, not a high number, um, and the duration of them was generally short. But the company that's producing this uh, is going on with what's known as the Valor trial, where they're using ARC plus or minus vosoroxin in untreated elderly patients. Those results are to come. Dr. Marina Konopleva is trying to take advantage of the observation that normal bone marrow is hypoxic relative to the room air we're breathing now at 6 percent oxygen, but leukemic marrow is about 1 percent oxygen. And there are some agents, TH302 and this one that I've shown here, PR104, that are converted to active nitrogen mustards only under hypoxia. So they're selective for the leukemic environment. In a really highly refractory population of patients, she's cleared the blast in the majority of them and has had CRPs or CRIs uh, in a good number of them. So this is a potentially promising regimen coming forward. Sapocytabine puts a cyano group on a cytosine um, uh, nucleotide in phase one and phase two studies in relapsed and in untreated populations. You've had reasonable CR rates for a single agent. Uh, and a lot of these patients were uh, older, median age 77, 65. Uh, so this may be promising for a more difficult population to treat. With the discovery of FLT3 ITD has come the idea of targeting FLT3 ITD. This kinase tree shows that the agents that are typically have been evaluated are not particularly specific for FLT3. Uh, AC220, quizartinib is promoted as being more FLT3 specific. When FLT3 agents have been used as single agents in either mutant or wild type, there's been a very disappointing CR rate. When combined with uh, chemotherapy, some CRs, but again, kind of a disappointing CR rate. AC220 has been tried in phase one and phase two trials, in two trials that were recently presented at the ASH meeting in two different populations of patients uh, using a hybrid make our drug look good CR composite. They had about half the patients responding if they had an ITD, but if you look at the actual traditional CR rate, it's pretty low. If this is not enough for you, here is an alphabet soup laundry list of drugs that we have under trial currently at MD Anderson and their target, there's, uh, their method of uh, uh, modus operandi. Um, and these are things that might in the future show up here with a little bit more oomph behind them. 
And our conclusion would be that thus far, nothing has shown itself to be better than old-fashioned combination chemotherapy. Clofarabine as a single agent has utility. You should probably try to stratify your patients based on their chance of achieving a second CR as to what you put them on. There are some fascinating ideas that look good, hypoxia, the cholesterol blockade, and imatinib. Um, however, all of these need results of the long, follow-up long-term studies. Many new agents, much promise. FLIT3, there are a whole lot of drugs and very unimpressive results. And since we are in China, I thought I would close by modifying a quote from Chairman Mao and making it relate to the situation of relapse day and now. I thank you for your attention. Thank you.